Good morning, ma'am. This is Gaurvi from 8th day. There are many among us who given the opportunity to leave India are only too happy to go. But whenever I had the chance to go away, I had held back or something has held me back. What is it that such a hope? Good morning, ma'am. My name is Arush Kulcharist of class 8A and today I am going to read a paragraph on Sir Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, mastermind of modern science. Sir Isaac Newton, English mathematician and physicist. Good morning, ma'am. Myself, Anvi Mudgal of class 8. Today, I am going to share a story of a parrot. One day, a hunter was passing through the jungle. The pair of beautiful parrots catch his eye. They will make a present. Good morning. My name is Chirag Ahuja. I am a student of class 8 day from St. Mountwood School. Today, I am going to read the first chapter of my English textbook. So, let's begin. The word myths come from the Greek. Good morning. My name is Chirag Ahuja. I am a student of class 8 day from St. Mountwood School. Today, I am going to read the first chapter of my English textbook. So, let's begin. The word myths come from the Greek. Greek word mythos. Mythos in the Greek means story or speech. Myths are story. Myself, Sankar Singh from class 8 day. Today, I am going to read a story. So, let's begin. Who at the sun? The word myths come from the Greek words mythos. Mythos in the Greek means story or speech. Mythos are stories that have come to us from the beginning of human. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Nancy Thakur and I am here to present you a short poem. The poem name is The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler long I stood and looked down as far as I Good morning, ma'am. I am Archie Siro here of class 8 day. Here I am to tell a story about on beginning and India. There are many among us who, given the opportunity to live India, are only too happy to go. But whenever I have heard chance, and all present here today, I am Shweta Singh is going to read a story on the topic the elephant row. A gentleman was walking through an elephant camp and he spotted that the elephants were in being kept in cages or held by the users of team. Good evening ma'am, myself is Kaur of class 8A. Story Jerry and Ema are the husband and wife. It's summer and Jerry's birthday is approaching. Ema wants to give him a present for his birthday. But she wants it to be a secret. So she must keep a Good morning ma'am. I am Divyanka Malvia from 8th day. Never give up. There was a rich merchant who lived in the city of Karaikal. He had a fleet of sheep and a dealer dealt in the trade of spices. He minted money. Good morning ma'am. My name is Jinali Padmani. I am from class 8th day and today I am going to read a topic on trees. Trees. Trees form the most essential components of our environment. They take in sunlight, carbon dioxide and water to I am Smith Bindi of class 8 day. The name Bimbitika, however, is associated with Bhima, the body prince from the Mahabharata, known for his immense strength. The word Bimbitika is said to be derived from Bimbetha, meaning the better, a ship down or ship of Bhima. This kept up would further continued by Shma. Thank you. Scientists believe that these rock shelters deep in the forested heart of the Indian subcontinent were inhabited by the hominids more than 100,000 years ago. The rock paintings found here are approximately 30,000 years old, belonging to the Paleolithic age. Now, the rest chapter will be continued by Devansh Tiwari. An archaeologist Vishnu Sridhar Vakankar chanced upon these rock shelters in 1957 while travelling by train to Bhopal, hidden in a dense, almost impenetrable forest inhabited by wild animals. These shelters had long found mention in the popular culture of Adivasis. During the Buddhist era, some stupas are built in the vicinity and the region become associated with Buddhist lore. Now this chapter will further continue by Mohit. Thank you. Elsewhere, the scenes de depicting hunting, fishing and food gathering as well as communal dances, the use of musical instruments, birds, funnels and burials make these rock surfaces come alive with a thousand stories. 
The cognizable animals figures appear in many scenes as two humans, both single and in groups, thus indicating a society had already emerged in a paralytic period. Now this chapter gonna be continued by Hojas Panchal. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Abhinav of class 8B Saint Manfred School, Bhopal. Today I am going to read the chapter I Drugs. This travelogue is about Bhim Betka, the prehistoric rock shelters in Madhya Pradesh where early humans painted scenes from their life and their world. Bhim Betka, as the author realizes, is an awe inspiring gallery displaying art that dates from the Paleolithic, the early Stone Age to the medieval, the Middle Ages all on one stony canvas. We find records of life starting from the period when people were hunter-gatherers to the time when iron technology had become quite significant. A study of these paintings gives us an insight into the activities of prehistoric people, their clothing, the animals they had, the numer and numerous other facets of their daily life. Thank you. Myself Amisha Gaur of class 8C of Salman Full School, Bhopal, along with my dear friends, are here for our reading class. Today we are reading the chapter from our SST book. The name of the chapter is Resources. What is a resource? Anything that satisfies human needs is called a resource. Gifts of nature such as air, water, soil, forests and minerals, as well as human creations such as buildings, roads and so on are resources because they satisfy various human needs. Human beings too are a resource because they have the ability to develop skills that can help them identify new resources and find new uses of existing ones. A thing becomes a resource only when its useful properties are recognized. For example, coal has existed on earth for millions of years, but it became a resource only when man discover its fire producing property. Coal which is now considered very valuable had no more value than an ordinary rock until it was recognized as a resource. So once a thing is recognized as a resource, it acquires some value. Now my dear friend Saksham will continue from here. Thank you Saksham. Classification of natural resources. Natural resources can be classified on the basis of their nature, stock, distribution and the level of development and use. On the basis of their nature, natural resources may be biotic or abiotic. The biotic resources are living things such as useful plants and animals. The abiotic resources are non-living things such as water, air, solar energy, soil and metals. Depending on their stock, natural resources may be renewable or non-renewable. Renewable resources are those which are present in unlimited quantities or are constantly being generated by natural processes or can be generated by us. Thank you. Now my friend Kritika will continue. Thank you Kritika. Many natural resources are cycled within the environment by natural processes and this keeps their quantities more or less constant. Such resources when consumed are replenished over time. Some natural cycles like the water cycle and the oxygen cycle take place quite rapidly, while some like the rock cycle are very slow. Hence, all resources do not get replenished at the same pace. Some natural resources can also be generated by us. For example, we can produce forest by planting trees. But even such resources will ultimately be exhausted if they are consumed faster than they can be regenerated. Now my friend Arun will continue. Thank you Anvisha. Now I am reading value of a resource. Different resources are valued for different reasons. Some reasons can be bought and sold or can be used to make things that can be bought or sold. Such resources have economic values. Crops and vendors are examples of such resources. The need for pressure is also a human need. So, things that give us pressure are also resources. Mountains, deserts, etc. are resources because we have their beauty. Such resources have aesthetic values. Now I am reading types of resources. Resources may be classified as natural, human and human-made or man-made resources. 
resources like air, water, sunlight, minerals, forests and wildlife are provided to us by nature. They are called natural resources. Human being and their qualities and ability are called human resources. Knowledge, skill, wisdom, health, etc. are human resources. Improving these qualities is called human resources development. Resources created by human beings are man-made resources. Man-made resources include house, roads, schools, hospitals, government bodies, machines, and so on. The application of the latest knowledge and skill is doing or making things is called technology. It is called man-made resources. Thank you. Now I am hand over in this book to Arish. Thank you, Arish. Resources like sunlight, wind, air, etc. are in our system. They are present in such vast amounts that human consumption for various purposes does not affect their total quantities much. Our activities can, however, make these resources unusable. For example, if air becomes polluted, we cannot breathe it, even if it is abundant. Now, Good morning, my name is Tarun, studying class 8D. I will do who English with the sun para reading. In our country, the story is told about a demon Rahu who deguzzled him as a god to in order to steal a taste of Amrit after it was chewn out of the ocean. Hello everyone, I am Anushka Mishra and I am in class 8D. So, on the occasion of National Reading Day, I have got the opportunity to read the famous novel by Ruskin Bond, The Roof on the Top. And I'm gonna read its introduction part. So, here we go. Dear old room on the roof, I can't say I miss it. It was horribly hot at times. But I feel a certain nostalgia for that little Varsati where I spent an important year of my life. It has long since vanished, the building having been pulled down to make way for something bigger and more impressive. But I'm happy to report that the room still exists in my first novel, which has been around for 50 years, much to my own experience and delight. It has its genesis in 1951, the year after I finished school. I was waiting for a passage to England, making a little pocket money by writing magazines and keeping a journal in which... I wrote about my friends, neighbors, our little picnics and expeditions and my hopes and dreams for the future. In due course, this little brasati in Dehradun was exchanged from a small attic room in London lodging house and it was still out of longing for all that. I left behind in India that I turned my journal into a novel and called it The Room on the Roof. Found a sympathetic it went round of several pul publishers and found a sympathetic editor in person of Diana Ethel, then a junior partner in the film of Andrea Dutch. Diana went on to become a successful writer and a celebrity in her own right. But when she met her, an editor just a few years older than me, she showed my manuscript to Walter Allen, the well-known critic, and to Laurie Lee, the author whom both we made encouraging sounds but advised again publishing the book, saying it would be a gamble. But in those days, publishers occasionally took gambles and Andrew Dutch gave me a contract in advance of $50. This was a standard advance in 1953. However, it was two years before the book came out and by the time I was back in India. The Room on the Roof, roof received favorable reviews, went into a German edition received the John Llewellyn Rees Prize, which was won by V.S. Naples a year later. But sales were poor and the publisher shied away from doing another book of mine. Many years were passed before another would be published in England. Then it would not be but several books for children. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Hello everyone, myself Parzu Saksana from class 8 East from St. Monfort School and today I am going to be reading my English textbooks chapter Ancestor. Many children have never seen it, yet without the typewriter. There would not have been a computer as we know it. The typewriter is the ancestor of the personal computer that is such a major part of our lives. Did you ever wonder why computer keyboards and now some mobile phones as well? have the strange layout that they have with the QWERTY keys across the top left. The answer lies buried in decisions. 
made more than 1000 years ago when the typewriter was first appeared the placement of letters in this odd way in the qwerty keyboard was intended to prevent frequently stuck threes from coiling thus the e was next to the w and so on as we will begin even faster typewriters this was the important consideration The QWERTY keyboard also became popular because it was the first keyboard and was manufactured by Scholes and Gladden. The late 19th century saw continued product improvement. The first model appeared around the turn of the century, but they were not successful. It was not until the 1930s when electricity was more common that the company IBM came on the scene with the electric typewriter. The need for speed and automation led to further development of typewriters. such was enthusiasm of the early users one of these was mark twain who wrote to his brother in 1875 good morning ma'am my name is sangmitra sujish from class 8e st monford school bhopal and today i am going to read out an interesting story the milkmaid and her pail patty the milkmaid was going to market carrying her milk in a pail on her head As she went along she began calculating what she would do with the money she would get by selling the milk I'll buy some chickens from the market she said and they will lay eggs each morning which I will sell uh, and would get lots of money with the money that I get from the sale of these eggs I'll buy myself a new dimity frock and a chip hat and when i go to market all the young men would love to speak to me my friends will also be so jealous but i don't care i shall look at them and toss my head like this as she spoke that she foolishly tossed her head back and the pail fell on the floor and the milk was wasted the moral of the story is do not count your chickens before they are hatched Thank you. Good evening, respected Rupinder Ma'am. My name is Sharanya Sachetana from Class 8E. Today I am going to read a paragraph. Fresh from the book launch of Ijlal Majid's stunning new poetry collection in Bhopal, I find myself gazing at the rock shelters of Bhim Bhetika and murmuring his verses over and over again. For indeed, there is something sublime about this place. Looking at the orc and fire engine red paintings drawn by human hands several thousand years ago, spotting a buffalo or a deer, seeing how our earliest ancestors fought, sang, and played, makes Bhim Bhetika a singularly unusual place. Thank you. Good afternoon respected teachers this is me Vinanshi Sharma so today i will be reading an english mcb books chapter which is on being an indian so let's start there are many among us who given the opportunity to leave india are only too happy to go but whenever i have had chance to go away i have held back or something has held me back what is this that has such a great hold on me but leaves others free to go where they will sometimes never to return many years ago i was offered a well paid job at a magazine in hong kong i thought about it for weeks worried myself uh, to distraction and finally with a great sign of relief turned it down my friends family uh, thought i was crazy they still do most of them would have jumped at a comparable offer even if it had meant spending the rest of their lives far from the palm fringe coast or pine clad mountains of this land many friends have indeed gone away never to return except perhaps to get married very quickly before they are off again don't they feel homesick i wondered I am almost paranoid at the thought of going away and then being unable to come back. This almost happened to me when as a boy. I went to England long re- to return to India but did not have money for the passage. For 2 years I worked and slaved like a miser 
something I have never done since. Until I had enough to bring me home. And home was in parents, brothers and sisters. They were no longer here. Home for me was India. So what is it that keeps me here? By birth, I take too closely after a Nordic grandparent to pass for a typical son of the soil. People often ask me where I hail from, India, I say. But you don't look like an Indian, they protest. I am Red Indian, I say. India is where I was born and went to school and grew to manhood. India was where my father was born and went to school and worked and died. Surely that entitles me to a place in India, son. If it doesn't, I can't revert to my mother's family and go back in the time of. Timer the lame. How far back does one have to go in order to establish one's happiness? It must be the land itself that holds me. But so many of fellow Indians have been born and reborn here and yet they think nothing of leaving the land. They will leave the mountains for the plains, the villages, for the cities, their country, for another country. And if other countries were a little more willing to open their doors, we would have no population problem. Mass immigration would solve it. But it's more than the land that holds me. For India is more than a land. India is an atmosphere. Over thousands of years, the races and religions of the world have migrated here and produced that unique. Indefinable phenomena, the Indian so terrifying in a crowd, so beautiful in himself. And oddly enough, I am one too. I know that I am as Indian as a postman or panwala or your favorite movie star. Race did not make me an Indian, but history did. And in the long run, it's history that counts. Malala Yousafzai, the educational campaigner for Swath Valley, Pakistan, came to public attention by writing for BBG Urdu about life under the Taliban using the pen name Gul Makai. She often spoke about her family's fight for girls' education in her community. In October 2012, Malala was targeted by Taliban and shot in the head as she was returning from school on a bus. She miraculously survived and continued her campaign for education. In recognition of her courage and advocacy, Malala was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize in 2014, becoming the youngest ever recipient at just 17 years of age. She was honored with National Youth Peace Prize in Pakistan in 2011, the International Children's Peace Prize in 2013, and she was shortlisted for Times Magazine Person of the Year. Malala continues the campaign Universal Access to Education through Malala Fund, a non-profit organization investing a community-led program and supporting education advocates around the world. Thank you. Brain to grasp. We need explanation for gen- questions that we cannot still answer. Based- Good morning, I am Yashwarana Sahu from Class A, Section F. Now I am reading Science Chapter 1, Crop Production and Management. Agriculture Practices Till 10,000 BCE, people were nomadic. They were wandering in groups from place to place in search of food and shelter. They ate raw fruits and vegetables and started hunting animals for food. Later, they could cultivate land and produce rice, wheat and other food crops. Thus was born agriculture. When plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large scale, it is called a crop. For example, crop of wheat means that all the plants grown in a field are there. Good morning, dear children. Today I am Benjamin Ranchi of class 8 Tech, making 2 minutes video for reading a chapter from Paragraph. Fresh from the book. Launch of Islam Muslims, stunning new poetry collection in Bhopal. I find myself gazing at the rock shelter of Bhimbetka, murmuring his verses over and over again. For indeed, 
there is something sublime about this place. Looking at the opening and fire engine, red painting drawing by human hands several thousand years ago. Spotting a buffalo or a deer, seeing how our earlier ancestors found sand and played making green beta, a singularly unusual place. An archaeologist, Vishnu Sridhar Vakampa, chanced upon these rock shelters in 1957. While traveling by train to Bhopal, hidden in a dense, almost impenetrable forest inhabited by wild animals. These shelters had long found mention in the popular culture of the Adivasis. During the Buddhist era, some stupas were built in the vicinity and the region became associated with Buddhist lore. The name Dhimvedka, however, is associated with Bhima, the warrior prince from the Mahabharata, known for his immense strength. The word Dhimvedka is said to be derived from Dhimvedka, meaning the beta, a sit down or sit of Bhima. Thank you, dear.